Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on the epidermis. So the epidermis is kind of um, what you think of as skin. It's the outermost layer of your, uh, of your skin, and it protects against water loss, um, harmful chemicals, mechanical injury, and pathogens. So it's kind of that outer barrier that protects your body from the outside world. Uh, its general structure, I know it looks super complicated, but relax. Uh, its general structure is that it's stratified squamous epithelium. So that means it's the squamous epithelial cells, but it's in layers. And it rests on that basement membrane that's between um, the, the epidermis and the dermis. And it lacks blood vessels. And what that means is that as cells grow, um, and they're, they grow from the, the inside, the inner layer, uh, those older cells migrate towards the free surface. They get pushed out and they're farther away from the blood, blood vessels. So as that happens, they're going to not have access to nutrients. So as they migrate, they become ker keratinocytes. Um, and so they, they flatten and they die because they, they don't actually have any food. So they undergo this process of keratinization um, and they get harder and they get dehydrated and they accumulate keratin, which is this tough fibrous waterproof protein, um, which is good because it kind of makes our skin into this nice waterproof layer, which is great. Um, so there's five different layers of the epidermis, the stratum corneum, which is the outermost layer, and that's just dead keratinized cells that have no nucleus. So that's, you know, like the skin that if you're looking at your, your arm, that's what you see. The stratum lucidium, which is only thick skin. So that's the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. Um, the stratum granulosum and the stratum spinosum, which I don't actually care if you know anything about them other than that they're there in the order. Um, and then the stratum basale or the germinatia, German, uh, I can't say that word, you guys, germinativium, I don't know, I can't say that word, I can never say that word, it's just a struggle for me, so the stratum basale or stratum basal, that's how I learned it, because um, that's the base layer, which is the deepest layer, it's the one that's nourished by the blood vessels and the dermis, and that is where mitosis takes place, so it says it's a mitotic layer, that just means that that's where cells are actively dividing, that's literally all it means. So, here we go, looking at an actual, um, like a histology slide, so actual tissue sample of the epidermis. So as the cells reach that outside surface, they become really tightly packed and they develop desmosomes, which are basically connections between cells. They basically link up and they form that outer layer of the stratum corneum. And that those are eventually gonna be shed from your skin surface. And you've all seen shedding skin, um, like if you, ever had like ashy skin that's basically dry dead skin cells that are flaking off right um, if you've ever taken a piece of like clear tape like scotch tape and put it on your skin and pulled it off uh that's those are that's what you're seeing you're seeing the stratum corneum which is the dead cells that are being shut off um it is thickest on the palms and soles um and most of your body has a thinner well not the stratum corneum because again that's a different but the the, your epidermis is thickest on your palms and your soles. So it's anywhere from um, 0.8 to 1.4 millimeters. Most of your body has thinner epidermis, 0.07 to 0.12. And the thinnest is on your eyelids. Just, you know, random knowledge. Thinnest is on your eyelids on the outside of your body. Um, so this is a table of the layers of the epidermis. Uh, it is found in your textbook. Um, so if you are struggling, I just wanted to point out that that was there. So the next thing I want to talk about within the epidermis is important. It's the melanocytes. Um, and I want to talk about melanocytes because melanocytes are responsible for melanin, which is responsible for skin color, but it's also responsible for, um, for the most dangerous form of skin cancer. So melanocytes are located in the, um, in the lowest layer of the epidermis, and they're produced by the dark um, they produce melanin, which is the dark pigment that, um, that causes skin color and eye color and hair color. But in your skin, they're produced by these melanocytes in, um, in your epidermis. And so what happens is they absorb UV light, which is from sunlight, um, and they're going to go ahead and that's going to trigger the production of melanin. Um, and melanin gets distributed in those upper layers of squamous epithelium to protect the skin 
from the damaging effects of UV light. So basically, it's like built-in sunblock. Um, and so the melanin, the, the pigmentation in your skin is there to go ahead and protect your skin from UV damage, um, which causes DNA damage, it causes fibroblast damage, and eventually it leads to skin cancer. So let's talk about skin color. So affecting factors that affect skin color. So obviously hereditary factors affect skin color. All people have the same number of melanocytes. Doesn't really vary between people. But what does vary based on hereditary factors is the amount of melanin that your melanocytes produce. That's under genetic code or genetic control. So like, look at me, I'm super pale, right? My family lacks the ability, at least my mom's side of the family, lacks the ability to produce a significant amount of melanin. Like when I go out in the sun, I don't really tan, I just really burn. So I'm not good at producing melanin. My melanocytes are pretty poor at it, okay? Um, and so there's a, they, the melanocytes, the number is constant, but how they distribute the melanin and the size of the melanin granules that they produce is actually different. Now, when you look at albinos, they actually are inheriting a mutation in the melanin genes. And so they're actually, their melanocytes are incapable of producing melanin because they, they can't make that protein. Uh, there's environmental factors for sure that affect the, the color of skin. So obviously increased sunlight, increased UV light from sun lamps, increased x-rays, those are all forms of radiation. Those are all going to trigger the melanocytes and increase the production of melanin and result in a darker phenotype, a darker skin color. Physiological factors can also affect skin color. And these are not like skin color like you guys are thinking like normal. These are like, that's not like a normal human color skin. Um, and by normal human color skin, I mean like your skin shouldn't be blue, right? It shouldn't be blue. So um, so that's a sign of a disruption in homeostasis. So for example, uh, when we're looking at oxygenation in the blood, in the dermal blood vessels, so if your blood is well oxygenated, you'll look flushed, pinkish. So after, um, you know, you you go outside and and run or something um, and you exercise a lot, your body starts going ahead and bringing in more oxygen, right? And then also you get warmer. Um, and so you send more blood to your surface to go ahead and cool off, which we'll talk about in a separate video. But what that results in is more oxygenated blood at the surface of your skin. And so you look pinkish, right? So a flush versus cyanosis, which is um, typically you don't see cyanosis in like full face, but you can, but you see it more in fingertips and like uh, lips, like extremities, where if somebody has very low blood oxygen, they start to take on a bluish tint. Um, and that's a sign that they're not getting enough oxygen. And that's a problem. Then there's vasodilation and vasoconstriction. And that's kind of goes along with what I said when you exercise and you get that pinkish blush. Vasodilation is when your blood vessels expand and carry more blood to the skin, which is going to affect your coloration. Vasoconstriction, they, they, they pull back and you'll look paler. Uh, then you can get accumulation of carotene pigment from diet. <clears throat> which can actually kind of give you kind of a yellowish orangish tint depending on your melanin production. I mean, you're not going to be like orange like Arnold was in that like magic school bus episode, but it can go ahead and cause a little pigmentation. And then jaundice, which is kind of a yellow um, cast to your skin tone. And that can happen in pretty much anyone. Uh, it's seen very frequently in people with hepatitis and then actually in newborns. And it's caused by uh, an imbalance in the bile production uh, in your liver. So that's it for your notes on epidermis. We're going to do a separate set of notes on dermis. If you have any questions, go ahead and send me a message or an email and we'll set up a time.